All right, Shalom, Makim Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, as always, we want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rechabodash. We want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, the Apostles' Truth. And uh, as always, much peace, love, and salutation to the elect. All right, the house of David. All right, the Bayath Dawada. All right, who the Lord is going to deliver in these last days, all right, as well as a large multitude who are scattered. Okay, scattered among the heathen who the Lord has put his Holy Spirit in these last days to raise up, to serve him, to call upon his name as it tells you in the land of our captivity, we will remember ourselves. All right. Um, but what we want to do in the spirit is uh, we want to actually go over the book of uh, Hosea, not the whole book, of course, but Hosea chapter one. And, you know, if the spirit permits, if we go into chapter two, you know, we'll go into it if the, if the spirit permits it. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, the main reason as to why. We know we're going into this through the spirit is because you have a lot of these, you know, these so-called Christians coming out about the Gentiles, talking about how the Gentiles are talking about the heathen. And we, we all have access now through the, the, through the blood of Jesus, as they say. But they don't they don't even understand the, the story that Yahweh Bar Shemal Shai has put forth from the Old Testament to the New of what the nation of Israel will be going through to make them a Gentile. Yahweh Shai coming on the scene, preaching the word of Remission of sins for us to even have access back, as was prophesied in the Old Testament. You see, they think that it's just jump straight to the, you know, somebody jumped to the Book of Matthew, says God loves everybody, John three sixteen, and they have a complete understanding of the scriptures. You know, and that's not that's not what it's talking about, man. The whole Bible is talking about the nation of Israel and our relationship that we would have with the Heavenly Father. You know, us transgressing, falling away, and coming back. You know what I'm saying? So what we want to do is the book of Hosea actually goes into that, mm -hmm. you know, in a, in a very, very beautiful way. Hosea, how you say it in the Hebrew is a uh, Havashai, which means a uh, 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 deliverer, you see? So in it's spiritual, how Hosea's name means deliverer, how the Lord is going to deliver us, right? Mm -hmm. um, just some historical background, you know, uh, uh, Hosea actually prophesied the same time as Amos as well as Isaiah. You see, because uh, uh, when you read the first verse, it says that um, he prophesied in the kings, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, which Isaiah did the same thing. And doing some research, from what I read, I also read that Hosea could have possibly been an understudy of Isaiah. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, who knows? You know what I'm saying? You know how the prophets are today. Right, right You know, right. we see each other. And, you know, they, who says that they didn't see each other? They chill, you know what I'm saying? Right. That could have possibly happened. You know, but it was around the... Uh, 770 uh, BC to 725 BC was the time frame of his ministry, you know, so it was in the time of the Assyrian Empire because of who the Hosea prophesied to, you know, uh, the, the Northern Kingdom, Khan, exactly, he prophesied to the Northern Kingdom, the Northern Kingdom was going completely off, mm -hmm. right, so, you know, without further ado, and he himself was from Judah, exactly, uh, I think Amos is from the southern kingdom and he prophesied to the north, but Hosea was from the northern kingdom. Okay, okay. okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. No, no, it's all good. But um, without further ado, you know what I'm saying? We can jump right into it. You know, if anybody got to open the you got to open the piece up. No, 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 I was going to read it for you. Okay, yeah, come, come, come. come. All right, this is the book of Hosea, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Ari. Come, come. Hosea, chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Bari, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jerobim, the son of Joash, king of Israel. Right. So when you read, for example, when you read Isaiah, the first chapter, the first verse, it's literally the same span of the kings that Isaiah was prophesying in the same span of those kings. So mm -hmm. as Hosea was prophesying to the northern kingdom, Isaiah also, he prophesied to the northern kingdom as well, mm -hmm. but he pretty much was like a duel. Like he, he was also letting the, the southern kingdom know what was getting ready to happen as well, too. Right. You see what I'm saying? So that gives the, the credence of the time of they probably they probably knew each other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And then when you read Amos, the first chapter, it's the same kings, too, because Hosea, Isaiah, and Amos all prophesied at the same time. Huh. You know, of course, but Isaiah had a larger, a larger portion. And you can read that history in Second Chronicles 27 and 28, just to give you a background of those different kings, you know, because I like to go into the geopolitical mm -hmm. aspect of what was going on as to what, why the Lord told particular prophets to say particular things, right? 
Verse 2? You can go ahead. Come, come. Back in verse 2, it <clears> says, <throat> The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. For the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. Right, so this is actually... <clears throat> This is actually physical. Like the Lord actually physically told Hosea to go get a wife of whoredoms. Mm -hmm. You see, and it was some, it was a symbolic representation of how unfaithful we were to the Heavenly Father. As a matter of fact, if you can, um, what's that precept in Isaiah where it says that the prophets will be a sign and a wonder, a, a sign? Uh, is that Isaiah 8? Let me see real quick. Isaiah 11? It says that the prophets will be a sign and a wonder. You know, uh, let me see if I can find it. You know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pull that up real quick because I just want to pull that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, sign and then wonder. Uh, it's Isaiah. Yeah, right here, 8 and 18. Okay, that's what it is. Yeah, what? Eight. This is Isaiah 8 and 17. <clears throat> I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Mm -hmm. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord have given me are for signs and wonders in Yasha'ala from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. You see, and this is through the Spirit. You know, this is Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Bashim Al Shah speaking through Isaiah saying that, look, the prophets, when they come on the scene, they're going to be for signs and for wonders in Israel. For example, you know, Isaiah prophesied naked. You know, he prophesied naked for some years. What was that symbolically representing? It was symbolically representing how Israel. Will go into captivity and they will be naked. You know, pretty much they will be cast off. They will, they will be cast off. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah had a uh, a yoke around his neck when he was prophesying, symbolically showing that they was going. The southern kingdoms were going to slavery. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Isaiah's uh, children, his two sons, uh, uh, Mahar. Uh, I can't remember. Mahar Shalashbaz or something like that. Yeah, Mahar Shalashbaz and uh, the, his other son, but pretty much. Both of their children that was born was for, was pretty much symbolic representation of a remnant shall be a rem, a shaar, uh, a remnant shall be saved yeah, and then two thirds a speedy a speedy yeah, yeah like a, getting destroyed <laughs> yeah that was all for signs and wonders though you know Ezekiel Ezekiel cutting the hair you know what I'm saying uh, cutting the hair and, and burning it you know the bottle being broken and they was and and the people knew you saying you know what I'm saying the people knew like okay these prophets do these particular things it was for a sign. So Hosea actually getting a wife of whoredoms, it had a spiritual representation to it mm -hmm. of how we would, uh, how we was to the Heavenly Father. Because we, uh, what's that? Uh, somebody grab Baba Kashad, Jeremiah 6, what is it? Uh, 6 and 2. two. Yeah, if you can grab that real quick. And also another brother can grab Isaiah, the 54th chapter, and uh, you can read verse 4, if I'm not mistaken. Just, you got it, bro. All right, Jeremiah 6 and 2. It says, uh, I've likened the daughter of Zion to a calmly and delicate woman. You see that? I've likened the daughter of Zion to a calmly and delicate woman. So the Israelites, us as a people, we are considered the wife of the Heavenly Father. Right? And what did we do? We committed adultery, spiritual adultery against Yahweh Bashan al by serving these other gods, you know, these different philosophies. You know, bowing down to the idols of the heathen. Right now, what solidified the adultery? What? Why? Why was it adultery? Because we were married to the heavenly father. How were we married to him? By the covenant. Because the covenant, exactly. Within the covenant, within those rules and regulations, you couldn't bow to idols. Exactly. You couldn't do this. It was a curse for that. Yep. There you go. And we got cast it away. Got cast away. You know, we broke. We broke the agreement. That's right. You see. We committed spiritual fornication, right? Okay. You can finish out of the article. Kind of. Was that it on there? Yeah, that's pretty much it. You can read it again, just better. Yeah. Jeremiah 6 and 2, it says, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a calmly and delicate woman. You see that? A calmly and delicate woman, right? Yeah, you got Isaiah 54. I got that. Okay, what does verse 4 say? Uh, it's verse 5. Okay, yeah, you got it. Go ahead. Uh, Isaiah 54 and verse 5. Well, start with verse 4 anyway. Kind of. Uh, verse 4 Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed Neither be thou confounded Right, and that's talking about us in today's time We're not going to be ashamed Or confounded about what the Lord Yahweh Shai Is going to do by delivering us, right Because even though we've gone away Now we're being brought back You see, so we can't be ashamed We're not going to be ashamed or confounded Right, by the heathen The heathen aren't going to win You know, Esau is not going to win Right, go ahead 
for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth. You see, we're going to forget the shame of our youth. And what, what was the shame of our youth? Adultery, you know, uh, us going off and serving the God. Right. Idol worship, idolatry, right. right? And us being scattered, us being a proverb and a byword among the heathen, mm -hmm. you know, that. all that's really, that all the Lord is going to cast that away. Go ahead. And shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. And not remember the reproach of our widowhood anymore. You see that because the Lord is going to beautify us again, He's going to set us back in our land. You know, he's going to put us over the nations. Right? Go ahead. Here's the point. Verse 5. For thy maker is thine husband. Thine maker is thine husband. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is our, he is our husband. Go ahead. The Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh host is his name. Mm -hmm. And thy redeemer, the holy one of Israel, thy power over the whole earth shall be shall he be called. Right. So Yahweh Bashim Yahweh You see, and, and it says uh, his redeemer. We're just talking about Yahweh Right, the Apostle Paul says, "I have espoused you. <laughs> I was, I have espoused you to one husband." You see, so us in today's time, we are to be that chaste virgin. But during the time of Hosea with the Northern Tribe, man, we was going off. Well, I'm talking about complete. There was not one Northern Tribe king that did not just completely just go left field. Yeah, they all went off. Every single last one. And that was the reason too that the Southern Kingdom felt so entitled because. Of the 20, it was about 19 to 20 kings. One was a woman, actually. Mm -hmm. A thalia. About seven of them, six to seven did good. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they felt like they stuck to the traditions while the northern kingdom gave up on the most high. So they looked at them as a whole. Even the Gentiles that were in Judea at the time, they, they looked at them as Gentiles. But the northern kingdom, they were completely like, oh, y'all. Yeah. If you were part of the northern kingdom, those Jews who kept to the traditions would look at you like, no. You were scum of the earth. You were scum of the earth. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all went completely off. Yeah. And there's a scripture. Somebody type in Judah ruling faithful. Judah, uh, it's in, uh, it should be in Proverbs. Judah ruling faithful or Judah faithful with the saints. Oh, it was Hosea 11. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah read Hosea 11. Hosea 11 and 12. It reads, it says, uh, Okay, it says Ephraim Ephraim compasses me about with lies. And who's Ephraim? The head of the northern kingdom. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the house of Israel with deceit. Mm -hmm. But Judah yet ruleth with the most high and is excuse me, and is faithful with the saints. There you go. It's faithful Dang. with the saints. So the Lord left that remnant within the circumcision that stuck to the traditions that eventually followed followed the Well, our northern kingdom were. <laughs> Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I wasn't on that. Okay, so um, so we we got the understanding about you know us being married to the Lord, all right, uh, the Lord being our husband and us being his wife, right? Mm -hmm. So let's jump back to Hosea, um, and you can read verse three. It's back in the book of Hosea, chapter one, verse three. It says, "So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Biblium, which conceived and bare him a son, mm -hmm. and the Lord said unto him." Call his name Jezreel. Call his name Jezreel. Now, without this brother saying it, what, is, what does Jezreel mean? Uh, souls. The most high souls. Yah Zarai Allah. Right? Yah E Zarai C. The most high souls. Right? So, go ahead. It says, Call his name Jezreel for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu. Mm -hmm. And will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. Right, and will call, and I will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. And that ultimately took place during uh, uh, which king? Which king came on the scene in the northern, of, of the northern tribe? Which king? Which Assyrian king? I rather say came on the scene among the northern tribe to take him into captivity. Shalmaneser the fifth. Shalmaneser the fifth began it, and Sargon the second was the one that really instituted. Like he really like pushed it, but it began with Shalom and Asa the fifth, and you can read that in Second Kings. Uh, well, Second Kings two, Second Kings thirteen, but Second Kings seventeen chapter goes into when the northern tribe got cast out of the land. Right? Uh, you can you can continue, right? Come back in verse five, and it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. Uh, go. Uh, well. Actually, go go back up. Go back up and read. Uh, go back up and read verse four again. Okay, come come. 
This is the book of Hosea, chapter 1, verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel, mm -hmm. for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu. I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu. Now, Jehu was a king that ruled in the northern in the northern kingdom and what he did was he pretty much slain all of uh, uh, uh he slain all of ahab's children uh his whole line pretty much a matter of fact just to pull it get uh what is it second kings 10 if i'm not mistaken uh yes grab second kings the 10 chapter just to go into that part of the history just to get an understanding of what's going on here you get second kings 10 and uh man i mean you can really start at verse one and just kind of read down so, but just mm -hmm. but just for uh, just for time's sake, let's yeah, we yeah. Yeah. just for time's sake, you start at, start with verse. The point is in verse eleven, but you okay. can start at verse eight. When you read verse one, it talks about Samaria. Mm -hmm. Second Kings ten and eight. Yeah, it says, and there came a messenger and told him, saying, they have brought the heads of the king's son sons. And he said, lay ye them in two heaps at the entering end of the gate until the morning. Go ahead. And it came to pass in the morning that he went out and stood and said to all the people, ye be righteous. Behold, I conspired against my master and slew him. But who slew all these? Mm -hmm. No, now. Well, if, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, um, if I'm not mistaken at this, at this point, Jehu, uh, Ahab pretty much set up a sacrifice for it. Because Ahab was completely wicked, yeah. right? And he went in and uh, he set up a sacrifice for pretty much out of worship to, a to the gods that Ahab was worshiping. And Jehu was like, you know what? I'm going to go in there and I'm going to see who's all with this guy. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to go in there and see who's all with this guy. And I'm going to feign myself as if, you know what I'm saying? And then he was like, all the people that's worshiping these false gods, I'm, they they, 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 they going to get their asses dead in. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, yeah, he probably blended in, blend it in yeah. and look and see he had them garments on, right? Yep. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, okay. You got it. Right, who first, was uh, Ahab's uh, wife? Who was their daughter? Damn, I thought, I thought, yeah, thought. Who sat on the throne of David? For oh, okay. That's, 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 that's the only. That's yeah. the only one. Wow. And David they was choose from what? The northern. That's Judah. Judah. Okay. Man. All right. Second King 10 and 10, it says, Know now that there shall fall unto the earth nothing of the word of the Lord, which the Lord spake concerning the house of Ahab. Right, because the house of Ahab, well, it, was, it, was, it was spoken that his house was going to fall due to all the wickedness that he was doing. You know, the Lord was going to kill him. And this is how the Lord played it out. Go ahead. Which the Lord spake concerning the house of Ahab, for the Lord have done that which he spake by his servant Elijah. Go ahead. So Jehu slew all that remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel. So Ahab, or excuse me, Jehu slew all that remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel. So Jehu came and murked everybody. All his sons, anybody that was going to be on the throne, anybody that was on that line. Personal friends, everybody. Jehu killed him. You know, go ahead. And all his great men and his kinfolks and his priests until he left none remaining. See, Jehu completely annihilated everybody. Completely everybody. So that blood, so when you go back and when you read Hosea chapter 1 verse 4, right? When you go back and read uh, uh, chapter 1 verse 4, this is going into an, a, a historical account. But we know that Jezreel means the most high souls. Right. Right? So we've been, where have we been sown? We've been sown here in Babylon across the four corners of the earth too. But as we read down in the chapter, it's going to show what the Lord is going to do with us. So that was it on that. We can go back. The word Jezreel also goes back to seed mm -hmm. too. You know, it's like a double dual word. I was looking into it one day. But sown, what do you do with a seed? Silver. So, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yep, the seed of Israel. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's back in the book of Hosea, chapter no, one. Back in the book of Hosea, chapter one, and uh, verse four again, it says, And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel, for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu. Right, I'm, I'm going to avenge, right, the blood of Jezreel, because. We just read that Jehu slew Ahab's children in Jezreel upon the house of Jehu. Go ahead. And will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Right. And I will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel because Jehu wasn't no Jehu wasn't even more, no more righteous than Ahab. He still went off too. 
right? Go ahead. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. Go ahead. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And the Most High said unto him, Call her name Lo Ruhamah. All right, call her name Lo Ruhamah. So, Kawan, what does what does Lo Ruhamah mean? You are not my people. I mean, uh, no, that means you are my people, right? Oh, did I get it right? All right. Oh, that's good. Uh, here it right Yeah, no, you good, you good. You say you don't remember? Uh-uh. La Ruma, La A Rama, which means no mercy. No mercy. No mercy, right? That's what La Ruma means, right? So read that again. It says, verse 6, And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And the Most High said unto him, Call her name Loruhamah, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. Right, so the Lord said he's not going to have mercy upon the house of Israel, but he's going to utterly take them away. And then, a matter of fact, just for, you know, just for educational purposes, if someone want to grab 2 Kings 17 and 6 real quick. And actually kind of lines up what we read in Isaiah 54 as well, too. It says, uh, for uh, the Lord had hid his face from us for a little while. You know, his wrath was just for a little bit, for a little moment, but he's going to bring us back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 6. In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria. Right. You see that? So in the ninth year of King Hosea, that's when uh, the king of Assyria came it took Israel out of, out of Samaria and pretty much planted them in different areas of, uh, it'll give you like the, uh, the different cities that they put in there. But, you know, he planted them pretty much over in the land of Assyria. You know, and that's where you get the, uh, the history of, as people call it, the Ethiopian Jews, because those transplants that came and dwelt in that land, that's when Yahweh shot in John the fourth chapter, was mm -hmm. talking to that, uh, that woman at the well. Yeah. He's like, our father Jacob built this well. You know, that was a heathen. Right. See? So, you know, that's where you go into the history. They was transplanted back into our land. Right? But that, that wasn't in that part, you know. Um, we can jump back to Hosea 1, unless anybody else had a precept. God, this is back in the book of Hosea, chapter 1, and uh, verse 7. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and will save them by the Lord their power. Mm -hmm. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and will save them by the Lord Yahweh their power. Go ahead. And will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Right, but stop there. So, um, if you don't mind, but that verse seven there, you know, that really historically is a two, it's a twofold verse because historically it's going to the time where the Assyrians came through and tried to uh, uh, pretty much ransack Judah. You see, I think it was King Sennacherib, and that's when the Lord came and brought that angel and killed like one hundred eighty thousand of their troops. You yep. see. Right. Uh, that's, and that's was, recorded in, in not just Hebrew history, that's recorded in the heathen's history too. Yep. They they have a different account of it, trying to make themselves look better. Mm -hmm. But they got smacked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, yep, absolutely. It was it was um like you said, Tazma Sennacherib. They got got dusted off. Mm -hmm. I think that that account is in uh, Second Kings nineteen. You don't gotta get it, but you can read it on your own time. But if, if somebody can grab Zechariah the fourth chapter. 4 and 6. Mm -hmm. This is Zechariah 4 and 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying... Well, actually start up the verse, maybe. Okay. This is Zechariah chapter 4, verse 4. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked to me, that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. Then he answered. So I want to say when you go up, is it talking about the uh, the horses that he seen in the mountain? The candlestick of gold. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, the candlestick of gold. Excuse me, Slocky. The candlestick of gold yeah, going into how, uh, going into how the northern and the southern kingdom will feed into this olive tree, right? Which is pretty much feeding into Yahawashai, with him being Yahawashai being the main portion, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the olive tree is not. Is you want me to read verse two? Uh, yeah, you know, if, I mean, you know, I mean, it's up to you, bro. Yeah, you can read. It, okay. It's Zechariah chapter 1, excuse me, Zechariah chapter 4, um, verse 1, it says, And the angel that talked with me 
came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked and behold a candlestick all of gold mm -hmm. with a bowl upon the top of it mm -hmm. and his seven lamps thereon mm -hmm. and seven pipes to the seven lamps. And it reminds me of how this, uh, in Revelation where it talks about how Yahweh Shai pretty much stood in the midst of the seven candlesticks. You see, go ahead. It says, and uh, excuse me, it says, um, and behold a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it mm -hmm. and his seven lamps thereon right. and seven pipes to the seven lamps mm -hmm. which are upon the top thereof. Go ahead. Verse three. Seven pipes which is upon the top pretty much. Oh, well, it's, it's probably going to it. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Verse three it says, and two olive trees by it. Mm -hmm. Two olive trees by it with the olive trees represent the northern and the southern kingdom as well as you can liken them to the law and the prophets. Right, go ahead. It says, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, mm -hmm. and the other upon the left side thereof. Go ahead. Verse 4. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my lord? Mm -hmm. Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? Mm -hmm. And I said, No, my lord. Verse mm -hmm. 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, this is the word of Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, unto Zerub, unto Zerubbabel, unto Zerubbabel, which Zerubbabel, Zariah uh, uh, Babal, which means sown in Babylon, which means Zerubbabel was the was the head of the uh, pretty much of the southern kingdom going governor. back into Israel. He was the governor. The governor, you know, which is you know the reincarnation of King David, mm -hmm. right? Go ahead. Yep. Kind says in verse. Um, Verse 4, then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of Yahweh Shem Shai unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not with not by might mm -hmm. nor by power, mm -hmm. but by my spirit, mm -hmm. saith Yahweh of hosts. Go ahead, read the next verse. Oh, uh, who art thou, O great mountain? Right, who art thou, O great mountain? So we know who this great mountain is. This is a this is a future prophecy. That great mountain, when you read in Jeremiah, says that uh, uh, Babylon will be a burnt mountain. Mm -hmm. So who art thou, O great mountain? Go ahead. Before Zerubbabel, mm -hmm. thou the house shalt of David. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt become a plain. Thou shalt become a plain. You're gonna be wiped out. Mm -hmm. You see, but it's gonna begin with this. What it said, but the Lord said, not by uh, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. So with this word going out. It's bring it's pretty much crushing these strongholds, man. The gates of hell will not prevail. The gates of hell ain't gonna prevail against it. Mm -hmm. it's you see, it's gonna be flattened, and it begins with this word, God. you know, going out and being preached. So the you know going back that was it on that. So going back to Hosea one and seven, read that uh, uh read Hosea one and seven one more time. God, <clears throat> this is the book of Hosea chapter one verse seven. It says, "But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and will save them by the Lord their power, mm -hmm. and will not save them by bow." Nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor, nor by, by horsemen. Yep, by horses, nor by horsemen. Because when the Lord saved Judah, he literally sent an angel. It was a spiritual, uh, a supernatural salvation that took place where the angel came and completely decimated their military. So it was by his spirit. So what's the Lord going to do that again? He's going to send reinforcements from on high to deliver us from out of the hand of our enemies. So we don't need to take up guns and ammo and, you know, have, a, have you know, all these weapons that these different Israelite camps is doing, you're not going to take down the so-called white man with, you know, uh, carnally. That's why uh, the weapons of the warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through the most high to, to the point down the stronghold. All we got to do is just pre uh, preach the word, right? Go ahead. Time. Back in verse 8, it says, Now when she had weaned uh, Laruma, she conceived and bare a son. Mm -hmm. Then said the most high, call his name Loami. Right, call his name Lo Ami, uh, uh, what does is, what is Lo Ami mean? It's a no mercy, right? Or, <laughs> it's Lo Ruba. Oh, I'm not sure. You don't know? Um, yeah, that's my people. Not my people. How do you say the people? Um, you don't know what's the name? La Anya. Right. So it says no. We say la'ah. Mm -hmm. Somebody don't say la'ah, ak. Mm -hmm. No, ak. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Anya, Ami means people. Ya at the end of it, my people. So, la a Anya, mm -hmm. not my people. Mm -hmm. well, or not people, oh, my, yeah. my. Okay? Right. right. So it means not my people. So the Lord, matter of fact, if the brother came by the shot, grab uh, uh, Jeremiah, the 15th chapter, and read verse 1. Jeremiah 15 and 1. Then said the Lord, then said the Lord unto me, though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this people. <laughs> you see that? Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, my mind cannot be towards this people. Now Jeremiah uh, uh, prophesied in what kingdom? You, it, one of y'all need to answer this because it was on the test. Yeah. <laughs> it was through the Babylonian captivity. Right. So the Lord said, though Moses and Samuel, which were high-level men as well as uh, uh, priests, stood before me, my mind can't be towards his people because what does Moses and Samuel represent? The law and the prophets. Well, the law. Well, I'd rather just say pretty much the law. You know, and, and mediate mediators between us and the Heavenly Father. So even though they stood before me, my mind can't be towards these people because our people were going way off. Right? Go ahead. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. So the Lord casted us out. Israel, he casted us away. He said, get, get out of my face. Right? And, and, you know, on your own time, if you want to read it, read Ezekiel 16 and Ezekiel 23. And it will give you the whole story of what the Lord, how the Lord pretty much took us out of, he, he pretty much cleaned us up. We pissed him off. We was pee popping on the handstand. And he beat us up. He beat us. He beat us across the whole world. <laughs> you know, so he cast us out. So what would that make you if he cast you out? A Gentile. Yeah. A Gentile. Heathen. A bastard. Yep. Strangers. Strangers, you know. So you got to understand this to understand the Gentile. You can't omit this and just jump to Matthew and say, well, Jesus died. No, you got to <laughs> add all of this into consideration. It's a book. It's all about it. Yeah. <laughs> right. With the Israelites at one point, the Lord said, I'm done with you. Mm -hmm. You're not my people no more. Yeah. Scattered them. You know, this was a part of it. Yep. Not my people. So if you're not the Lord, if you're not the Lord's people, that would make you, like the elder mentioned, a Gentile. If you're not his people, what what comes to being the Lord's people? What's one what's what was one key thing that comes to being Yahweh by some outside people? Protection. Romans the ninth chapter. Romans the nine. Oh, the covenants, the glory, the, uh, the service kingdom, of the, the service of the Most High. All these things come with being the Lord's people. So with us being casted away, right? We discontinue from our heritage. We literally completely discontinue from everything that the Lord gave us to the point where I was, we was in America, England, Africa, you know, not just just not knowing what the, who the hell we was, you know, to, to, to the point where we came back. We're beginning to come back and we read the law. We're like, dang, this is our custom. We broke this. I wasn't keeping this. I need mercy. Like your son. You know, <laughs> but I need mercy. Lord, but please have mercy on me. I, 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 I think he, you know what I'm saying? So, you, you know, the Lord's bringing us back to our understanding which grants us closer to Yahweh Shai. You see that? Um, you continue in verse 10. Oh, back in Hosea? Yep. yep. Come, come. All right, this is the book of Hosea, chapter 1, verse 10. It says, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. Which cannot be measured nor numbered. Now, that was a promise that the Lord made Beginning. To who? To who? Who did the Lord make that promise to first? Israel. I mean, yeah, but who? Who did Abraham. He say that? There you go. Oh, <laughs> right there. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Yeah. Abraham. 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 Uh, Remember? She told him. Right. It's a lot. You got it. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So he said that he said yet the yet the number of the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. Because he promised unto Abraham and said, what? Your descendants, I'm going to make your descendants as numerous as the sand of the sea and as the stars of heaven. Yep. Right? So, yet with all this going on, the, we will still be as the sand of the sea, that we can't be numbered. Right? Go ahead. It says, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, 
Ye are not my people. So in, it shall come to pass in the place where it was said unto you, unto them, excuse me, ye are not my people. So how do you say not my people in the Hebrew? Uh, La I am yeah. La La I am No people. Right? No or not my people. So in the place where it was said unto you, us, ye are not my people. So it was said unto us that we weren't the people of the Lord based upon what? Us being a proverb and a byword among the heathen. We call it niggas, African Americans, black. Y'all can't be the Israelites. Look at Vocab alone. We can't be the Israelites to carry the court. We, anybody but you. Anybody but you. You ain't. Nah, you, I don't know who they are, but you ain't them. You see? You got the 1948 or small hats over there claiming to be us. The Lord, the Lord did that to us. He's the one that placed them in that land. You see, it says, it says in Isaiah 1, the strangers devour your land in, in your presence. The Lord did that to us as a punishment. Mm -hmm. But with this word being preached, the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Yahweh Shai breaking the seals that we were going through yesterday at camp. Broke the seals, the understanding came down from heaven. Right? Isaiah 44 and 1. We're now we're, we're surnaming ourselves by the name of Israel. We come to that understanding. What? We are now coming back to our nationality of who we are. As the prophecy said, what happened? This Hosea 1 and 10 is literally happening. Right in front of us. Right? Yep, I got a preach one. See? <laughs> This is uh, 1 Peter 2 and 9. But ye are a chosen generation. I actually had that one right there. That's beautiful. Yep. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness Ooh. into his marvelous light. Who have called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. And I'm going to say that word darkness is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Yawanka, if you could pull that word up, I want to say that word darkness is, uh, it might be hypnosis. Uh, it might be hypnos, if I'm not mistaken, in the Greek. But you can continue verse 10. Right. Which in times and that in the darkness was when we didn't know who we were. We had no clue. We had no clue. We didn't <laughs> understand the Heavenly Father's what he wanted from us. We didn't have no guidance. Yep. It was mental. That, that, that the darkness is here. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Celebrating yeah. Christmas, Halloween, all those different joints. Yes. It was dark. You were up here. So, you know. Right. No, beautiful. Yeah. Which in times past were not a people. In time past. So this is in the New Testament. So you wacky Christians, you know, you Bible-thumping Christians. Peter, so who, what is Peter quoting? Hosea. He's, he's going away. <laughs> and Peter said, so he's going he's through the scrolls, breaking it down. <laughs> what do you think they were teaching from? The New Testament wasn't written when they were teaching. So they were going through the Old Testament prophecies in the, in the Apocrypha and breaking it down to the people, the meaning of the Lord's return mm -hmm. and how it's prophetically related to them coming back into the fold. That's why when Peter started his letter off, what did he say? To the 12, to the 12 tribes scattered abroad, yeah. greetings. Right, man. It's not that hard. These people just want to control the narrative. But the spirit is back now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And again. Yeah, you got it. Which in times past were not a people, but now are the people of the Most High, which had Ooh. not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. See, which have not obtained mercy, <clears throat> which have not obtained mercy. Mm. What is? How do you say no mercy in Hebrew? Laruhamah. Laruhamah. Right or la la a ramach. Right? Not no mercy. Now you've attained mercy. Peter literally is quoting Hosea. And we know that Hosea was written to who? Was it written it was it written to, was it written to the Edomites? No. Was it written to every nation on the planet? It was written to Israel. Yeah. What does the word Hosea mean? Salvation. Like how was shot. How was shot. So uh, like, come on. Like, you know, like these crit so come on now, <laughs> you know. Uh, was it on there? Uh, yeah, you got the that word, word darkness. darkness. Yeah, so the word darkness uh, goes back to skotos. Skotos, that's what it is. And the definition for it is of ignorance respecting divine things and human duties. Of ignorance respect of ignorance not knowing, respecting divine things and human duties. What's our duty? What, what's our duty? 
Fear the Lord and keep his commandments. Fear the Lord and keep his commandments. That's the whole duty of man. 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 You see what I'm saying? So it says, but of ignorance, respecting, looking back, remembering, as we was going to yesterday, yeah, forgetful, yeah. right? Yeah. Respecting divine duties. Yeah. And uh, uh, what was it again? And the company of ungodliness and immorality together with their consequent misery in hell. So pretty much being in the world. Yep, that's where we at. That's where our people are at. Pretty much completely mentally blackened. You know, being black, being niggas. You know, just that whole black culture. Death culture. You know, you know, uh, you know, Latino culture, Indian. You know, all these different things that the, that so called white man pushes on our people. Yeah, do these different things. This is you. That's why you got these different rappers and entertainers promoting wickedness. Because they want to keep our people in that darkened mindset. Mm -hmm. But Yahweh Bashim al Shai, through the Spirit, granted us that liberty, right, to wake up, to understand who we are as a people. And we didn't do nothing to deserve it. But prophecy had to be fulfilled that there was going to be individuals that were going to wake up in the last days. Matter of fact, if, you, if a brother can grab John 1 and uh, start at like verse 10, but I think the point is like 12. This is John chapter 1, verse 10. It says, he was in the world, and the world was made by him. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. I'm talking about Yahweh Shai was in the world, and that same world was made by him. He created everything. Mm -hmm. The Lord came on the scene, pre humbled himself into the form of a servant, and dwelt in the world that he made. In the Roman captivity, being a servant, being a slave in the Roman captivity. Right? Go ahead. It says, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, mm -hmm. and the world knew him not. And the world knew him not, pretty much going to our people. You know, like what it says, John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, mm -hmm. that through him we might have, you know, we, we're going to be saved or whatever, right? But our people did not acknowledge him majority, I'd rather say, but not every, not all of our people, but, you know, they didn't acknowledge him as a Messiah, right? Right. Go ahead. Verse 11, he came unto his own. And his own received him not. See, now you got a, a, a nigga named Ron White. Ron Wright down here and say, see, the, all the Jews rejected him. So what did he do? He went to the heathen. No. It's not what it's talking about, bro. Mm -hmm. Now it's not, not what it's going into. All the Jews didn't reject him. Exactly. Peter didn't reject him. John the Baptist spoke of him. They were Jews. They were of that Judah, Benjamin, and Levi who were raised in the customs. Mm-hmm. Why I tell you, John the Baptist was raped, uh, circumcised on the eighth day. I mean, they, his family was strict in the law. I tell you, they were perfect. Yep. So not all of the Jews deny Yahweh. He gathered the bulk amongst the Jews. The Jews, the tents of Judah were raised first. Well, it, it wasn't the bulk. It was not those, the bulk. It was those who believed in the those prophecies. who believed in Yahweh. Yeah, yeah because the, the Sanhedrin at that time, the yeah. temple of at Jerusalem, was politicized underneath the Roman Empire. And so that Yahweh coming up was treasonous to that empire, as it said that, and so they were afraid of that movement. And so once he took, once these prophecies start coming out and things start happening, the, the bulk of the Jews actually, as far as the temple goes and, the, and where the spirit was said to come from, rejected Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So they went to the castaways of our people that had faith and hope. You know, that downtrodden, the downtrodden. The needy, the, main, the, main, the, the poor, main. the main. <laughs> Spiritually, you were re, you were rejected under the first covenant if you were lame. Yeah. If you were halted, if you were blind. That's specifically talking about Israelites who were in an uncircumcised state, rejected state. Mm -hmm. Spiritually main, spiritually lame, spiritually blind. Yep. Gentiles. And just to prove that the Jews, uh now all the Jews didn't uh re reject the Howard Shah. This is uh Acts 13 and 43. Excuse me, it says, now when, the, uh, now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, Ooh. who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of the Most High. It is. They, got, they get it. They got it. And being connected to the, church, to the temple back in that time was extremely important as far as the welfare of your family. Because of the tithing systems and the access to funds and lands, and rights to certain things according to your father's name. If you were still on record and within the temple, bro, that's like that's like being being an Edomite on somebody's trust. 
And having that last name to say, yeah, that's my dad, that's my great great granddad right there. Yep. That could unlock the whole bank account that you didn't even know about if you still had that tie. So it wasn't like some willy nilly thing. You know what I mean? When you cast out of the nation, you got hold. <laughs> yep. You got broken off. Yep. Okay. Matthew was one of those priests who basically was collecting the money. Mm -hmm. They were they were had a nice position. Mm -hmm. the, yep. He was a tax accountant. He would go during the time of the, what they called the Kalends, at the first and fifteenth, right. and collect the taxes. And people hated Matthew. <laughs> you know. I got a quick one. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter six and seven, and the word of God increased. And the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests Ooh. were obedient to the faith. Nice. <laughs> Look at that. So you had people leaving that, leaving the, <clears throat> the temple yeah. and coming and following your house shot, man. Wow. You Even, know, if I may, will you finish? Yeah, but this is after the uh, Yahweh had died on the cross. Right, right, right. And everything right. was seen. And the ministry after that happened, they actually blew things up. To a whole nother level when you have a shot died on the cross. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got a uh, Real quick, if I was going to make a quick point. Actually, no. Oh, Priest will come first. Uh, this is uh, Acts 21 and 20. Just wondering what you said. When they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. Woo! The beautiful one. Nice. What was it Acts 21 and 25? Acts 21 and 20. Man, that's a good one. That's a good one. Even when you read in Acts 15. Like when it tells you how the Jews came and they was like, look, you got to be circumcised by the manner of Moses. And, and all that's pretty much when Peter, or uh, excuse me, when Paul went to Peter and they pretty much gathered the information needed to compile the letters to send to them different churches about the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. As you go into beautiful, like you've been going into that, yeah, right? Yeah. Those Jews that said that they believed on Yahweh, Sean. Mm -hmm. They was just like, look, but, but. They got to be circumcised. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was the only thing. That was like, but now the, the, the spirit was like, nah, bro. That's not, no. This is what it needs to be. But those Jews that said that they believed, it wasn't like they was right. They believed on Yahweh. They was just strict. Yeah. They was just, you know, more, they was just strict on the law. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but read uh, verse 10 again. If you don't mind, and Jose and one. Cut. Oh. <clears throat> what, did you, what did you have right now? You, um, you, you wanted verse 12 as the plain in, first, uh, in John chapter 1? I read oh, yeah, Slock. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bible for shot. Slock. I forgot. Okay. Go ahead. I'll just read verse 12. Uh, John chapter 1 and 12. It says, But as many as received him, mm -hmm. to them gave he power to become the sons of the Most High. Ooh, it says, As many as received him, to, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Mm -hmm. Right? So as many as received Yahweh Shai, received them through the Spirit, the Lord gave them power to become sons now. Children. Mm -hmm. Right? To be adopted back. To be adopted back. Yeah. Because right? they were already sons. You know? But that's why the scripture says in what? Romans 8, uh, now whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Mm -hmm. You see that? We have that, we're getting that relationship back with the Heavenly Father through Yahweh Shai, right? Go ahead. God. It says. Uh, at the end of verse 12, even to them that believe on his name. Even to them that believe on his name. Whether you be whether you be of the circumcision or whether you be not of the circumcision. That's why the, that's where you get there's neither Jew nor Greek. Right. But you're now one in Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. This ain't talking about a Moabite, a literal Moabite coming on the scene. Right. You know? But they got it then, you know. No. Now you may have a Jake that may talk like that. It could look like a Moabite really being Israelite, but there ain't no full blown Moabite gonna come on the scene, you know. No, that's not. It's not written. That's not gonna happen, right? Probably they got it. Go ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. say, yeah, yeah. Oh, you had a priest? <laughs> no, no. Okay, come. Go ahead. Point was made. Uh, back in the book of Hosea, chapter 1, verse 10, it says, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. In the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. Right? We just wrote, we just went through and broke that down as to how that happened, why that would happen. Right? Go ahead. There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living power. There... It's going to be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living power. Now, did, I, now I just read in John 1. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He just read in John 1 that we will become, now we become sons 
of the Most High. Right? Now hold that real quick. Uh, let's grab Romans 9 and start at verse 22. Romans chapter 9, verse 22. What if the Most High, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endure with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? Go ahead. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. Mm -hmm. The vessels of mercy. Uh -oh. Who needs mercy? Who needs mercy? Mm -hmm. The little rules of my people. Because <laughs> <laughs> without, without the Lord, we was vessels of wrath. We had no way back. Now, this is a two way scripture, too. You right. can look at Jacob and Esau because that's what Paul was going into at the time. But also, too, the Gentiles and, and those that know the Lord. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We need, we need mercy, man. Go ahead. So why did we need word mercy? Why did we need mercy? That's it. And without that, with and with that covenant, and with us being broken, or with us breaking the covenant, the curses will be on us perpetually. That's why Yahweh Shai had to be made a curse for us. See that? And that's what it's talking about in uh, excuse me, the book of Galatians. See? Go ahead. <clears throat> Real quick, let me read this. Huh. This is Deuteronomy 27. I'm going to read the last verse. In 26. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them, and all the people shall say, Amon. <laughs> True. Jake, we agreed to that. <laughs> right. Because coming out of Egypt, Who's in, the, who's in the wilderness, and most and most dip their branches to the yeah, basin, yeah, and we sprinkle the blood on yeah, Israel. Yeah, yeah, we will do whatever he said. Yeah, 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 bro. Uh, bro. And not our fault, but yeah. we agree. See, but he said, curse be he that does not do anything, does not do the words written that we all agree to say, kind. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> yeah, it was a verbal contract. And we, and we broke it. It's like, you got a, it's like you got a contract for a home or you in an apartment, right? And you sign a lease agreement. You know, and then you go in here and you fuck, excuse me, you knock holes in the wall, you spray paint graffiti yeah, all over yeah, the walls, yeah. stomping holes in the ground, throwing mm -hmm. chairs, busting windows. Yeah, yeah. Spaghetti yeah. from the ceiling. <laughs> Man, swapping yeah. all over the place. Yeah. You know, and then, and then the, 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 you signed the contract, though. You said that you're going to abide by this. Got dogs in there. You know, you, got your pet, you don't got the pet deposit. Then, then you, know? you said if I break it, I, I know. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm gonna pay it. I'm gonna have to pay the price. What you mean? What you but mean? somebody else comes on the scene and pays it for you. No but with him paying it for you, right? You still gotta make your. You still got with him paying it for you. You still gotta pretty much make that relationship between you and the person that made that lease right. Even though the guy, the, the middleman, came and paid it. You know what you were bought for a price. So what Seth talks about in Corinthians. The sacrifice that Yahweh made, you got a tab on your ass. You know what I'm saying? Because you were bought for a price. Now, to come into that glory, you it's have to become the sacrifice. It's through me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you gotta become the sacrifice now. And the only way that you're gonna get back to this person is through me. There ain't no other way. I, it's through me. Is what Yahweh shall say. He, he says it confidently and boldly too, because it's the truth. He paid the price, bro. He man, he paid the tab. Man, bro, you got it, bro. Back in Romans nine and twenty three, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Which he had afore prepared unto glory, because what that goes back that goes back to what. I'm sorry. I didn't Read that verse, the last part of the verse again. Which he had afore prepared unto glory. Which he had afore or before prepared unto glory. What does that go back to? Predestination. Predestination. Yeah, that's that's true. There was a, something else though. Predestination is 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 right, right? But it's something else as well. The covenant that was promised unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That covenant that the Lord of that that covenant that the Lord promised. To Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was that we would be kings and rulers through this promise that he made. Right? But that's why he told Abraham, he said, uh, uh, pretty much through his seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. And when you read Matthew 1 and 1, this is the genealogy of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, 
the son of David and the son of who? Abraham. You see what I'm saying? So Yahweh, it's through him. It's through Yahweh at the end of the day. Right? You got it. Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also the Gentiles. Not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles, going to Israelite foreigners, as we just broke down, go ahead. As he said also in Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people. So when you stop a Christian and you ask them, to, okay, what, that's, you know, that's what I'm going to start doing. I'm going to just go straight to Romans 9 and tell them what has to say to Hosea and go tell them to break that down. Because that's Paul literally is quoting the same thing Peter quoted, which is quoting Hosea. Yep. Literally. Yeah. You got it. Uh, which were not my people, and her, be, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. <laughs> Come on, man. Paul literally, Paul literally is quoting Jose again. So he's proving who those Gentiles. He's literally proving who those Gentiles breaking are. He's breaking it down to you in like in the in the most easiest term that you can see it. But you gotta have a spiritual eye to be able to see it. Even though it's plain, like you literally just gotta go back to Jose and look at the final scroll, mm -hmm. and go to it and read it and see who it's talking about. It's a mystery, because even Paul, being a Pharisee, had to get kicked off his horse on the road to Damascus. He was persecuting the Christians. So it's all spiritual, man. Paul got these breakdowns from Yahweh Shai himself, and then that's where he got the understanding. Like, oh, man, I'm tripping. I don't really, I'm not seeing the depth of these scriptures. I'm stuck on the, I'm stuck on the law and the tenements and the, and the ritualistic nature, but spiritually I missed it. Now I now I get it. I see it. Bro. I yeah. see it. This is what he, you were here for. This is what's going on. Yes. I got a quick one. Hebrews 9 and 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of a new testament, a new covenant, that by the means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. Ooh, Ooh, the redemption. Wow. Say that one more time. All right. The redemption as the redemption. Right. For the redemptions yeah. of the transgressions that were under the first <laughs> covenant or testament. Yeah. Finished. <laughs> through. Wow. Finito. We broke it. Those people, we, us, became scattered. Gentiles. Right. Castaways. Outcast. That they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Man, from those people, yeah. you can be redeemed. Contrary to the first covenant, you can be redeemed through Yahweh Shai. There was there there, but yes. But there was an agreement that was made by be going into before that. It was a promise that the Lord promised Abraham, mm -hmm. Isaac, and Jacob, like this is what this is what I'm gonna do for y'all. So even after, like what tells you in Hebrews 7, mm -hmm. right, the law, there, there was all there was going to be a ratification, right? Because the law, uh, an agreement is only made, you know, uh, an agreement's only made pretty much agreeable in a sense. Not even an agreement. I'm about to say, a, um, a, you know, a, 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 you know, when somebody dies and they have a will or that, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, like a will is only made pretty much a, a testament. Right, a test. It's only made an effect when the person dies. Right, right. You see, so Yahweh Shai had to shed his blood for us, man, for us to be brought back into that that agreement as in one as a Jew or a Greek or a why. So you gotta ask yourself, why does it only say Greek? Hmm. It doesn't say a Jew or a Hamite. No, no Parthian. Yeah, or Parthian, no, a Scythian, the Scythian, or this or that. It says a Greek. Why does, it only, why does it only say Greek, though? Hellenization. You, it wasn't... Man, to be a Greek was a... Pretty much like a, a, a known worldwide term. To be a Greek. To be an American. Greek is right. Russian. So, so yeah, it's an American... The whole American way and ideology. You know? Yeah. That was a... It was an ideology. It was a way that was pushed. That our people was coming out of. You know? Was that it on that now? Charles Parker. Okay, if you can, jump to uh, Romans 10 real quick and read verse, uh, since you're already there, and, and uh, read verse 16 through 19 if you don't mind. Oh, Crispy pages, man. Gotta lick your feet. <laughs> 
Uh, you can start at verse 16, but the point is at verse 19. Uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? So who hath believed our report at the end of the day? Here it is, we're on the highways and byways with the garments on, got the 12 tribe sign, preaching the word, letting our people know you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and y'all are Israelites, and even those who may not even look like so-called Negro, Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans coming and believing that they're Israelites due to the spirit. But who hath believed our report? Bocab Malone did not believe our report. It, can, it has to be somebody, it just can't be us. It, it, it can't be us. It's just impossible, right? So, so who has believed our report, right? Go ahead. And he's, and he's also quoting uh, Isaiah, right? Go ahead. So then faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing, right? Faith, the belief comes by way of you hearing it, right? Go ahead. And hearing by the word of the Mosiah. And hearing by the word of the Lord. The scriptures being being te being teached. Whether you was on YouTube scrolling, looking up Sean Kemp highlights, and you see a his you see an Israelite video on the yeah, side, yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You see the title, you like, oh snap, what is this? It's interesting. You yeah. You're clicking it, you're like, oh snap. And they breaking the scriptures down, and you know, you like, damn. Mm -hmm. I've been meaning to get to the Bible. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Straight up looking up, straight looking up uh, the ninety the ninety six Bulls. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Gary Payton highlights you over there scrolling. Bro, yeah. I remember when I first <laughs> when I first crossed to the truth. You remember the big green Bible I had? Brother Yeshua just looked at it and just started laughing because <laughs> it was worse than the NIV. It was just a, just a kid Bible. Like I was just like, I just believed. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, right. you, if y'all would see this Bible, all y'all would just bust out. <laughs> <laughs> it was that ridiculous. Oh, man. But that's how it was going to come. Mm -hmm. We would just believe, but we believed on the word. We heard the word and we believed on it. We was like, oh, snap, this is us. I remember hearing Deuteronomy 2868. I was like, oh, snap. Yeah. I was like, hold on a second. That was a that was literally the, when the light bulb literally, when mm -hmm. I heard that verse, it literally flicked in my head. I was like, oh, snap. I'm like damn, it's talking about us, mm -hmm. and I was just like, whoa! I was, I was mind blown. Mm -hmm. I was completely mind blown when I seen that scripture because I never, I didn't learn that in church. They, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know nothing about that. That was that one. That was the one. That was the one for me too. Yeah. You know, ships. I, I seen. I was like, oh, yeah. that, 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 it can't be talking about nobody else. You know? Yeah, you got it. Right. Verse 18. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth. It says, have they not heard? Verily or truly, their sound went through the whole earth, right? Somebody grab uh, uh, Psalm 19 and 4. Their line was gone through the earth. Because this is what Paul's quoting, by the way. Again, go ahead. Their sound went, went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. And their word unto the ends of the world. Right? Somebody got that song? I got it. You got it. Uh, Psalm 19 and 2. I believe you speak up too, bro. I believe it's 19 and 4. The, uh, pretty so, much so, so, so yeah. 19 and 2. Uh, day unto day, other speech, and yeah. night unto night, show of knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Right. There is no speech nor no language where their voice is not heard. And that's the internet. Right? right. Yeah. That's the internet where the, the word literally goes out. The, the word, it goes out 24 7. Literally. There's not a time of the day where you can't watch a video. You know, you can literally hear the word, the truth, 24-7. It does not matter what time it is. You can hear it. That's why the scriptures talk about how there's not going to be no cloak for their sins. Because you have, there's not going to be no time where you haven't heard it. But the prophecy says, what? Yahweh Shah said himself, this word is going to be preached throughout the four corners of the earth. And then the end is going to come. So that's how we know that we're at the end. Because this word is literally being preached throughout the whole world where we have been scattered. Because we were scattered among the heathen. So everybody in all nations, we got to hear the word. Huh? That's where it says uh, every tongue, kindred, tribe, and people in Revelation, uh, the fifth, the seventh and the fifth chapter. That's what that's going into. Because we've been scattered. They ain't talking about every nation on the planet now receiving salvation. No. We were scattered amongst the heathen. So the word is going to go out throughout the whole earth and then the end is going to come. So can you read that again? Uh -huh. Uh, Romans 10 and 18, but I, but I say, have they not heard? 
Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, mm -hmm. and their words unto the ends of the world. Go ahead. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. I'm going to, whoa. Yeah. I'm going to provoke you to jealousy by them which are no people. How do you say no people in the Hebrew again, uh, uh, Yazra? Hmm? How do you say, how do you say no people again in the Hebrew? There you go. I'm going to provoke them to jealousy by a, by a no people. Who's the 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 the, 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 the them to jealousy is talking about those of the circumcision, mm -hmm. the Jews, the Jews who look at the no people, the Israelite foreigners as a no people. They looked at them as heathen, common and unclean, common and unclean. Mm -hmm. Going right back to Acts of ten chapter when when Peter seen the vision of the of the of the unclean beasts and things. Right, go ahead. And by a foolish nation. And by a foolish, matter of fact, can you grab the word foolish? If, if, if you don't mind, go ahead. And by a foolish nation, I will anger you. And by a foolish nation, I'm going to anger you. I'm going to anger you by a foolish nation. They were angry because what? Those undesirables, those Gentiles, those common people were coming into the fold, believing on Yahawashai, right? Having faith on him, being brought back into the fold. They were like, man, hell no. Nah. You know, I was like, man, what? The, no, that's not, that's not, no, 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 this, this, this person, you got to imagine, they probably had tattoos, probably had bowl cuts, you know what I'm saying, wearing togas, you know, they was like, who the hell are these guys, nah, hell no. they ain't coming into the, nah, these heathen, you got that word foolish, yep, yep, you got it, this is, uh, let me see here, that's, it's an ethos, mm -hmm. all right, and the definition for it, yeah, it's an ethos, it says unintelligent without understanding. Unintelligent without whoa, without understanding. Yep. What's that? A, a precept. Side of children. Side of children. Another one. Proverbs. 24. Proverbs twenty-four. Yep. If you out if those that wander out of the way of understanding gonna remain in the congregation of the dead because you without understanding of the law and the word. Right. Go ahead. Uh yeah, that's it. It's stupid. Stupid. Yeah. yeah. That was it. Yeah. Yep. Oh, here it goes. Uh, by implication, wicked. Wicked. Go ahead. It says without understanding once more. Without understanding. We didn't have no understanding of who we was until the word got preached right. and we came into understanding. That's right. Oh, snap. That's us. Right? The scripture says in Acts of Most High that winked at, it was the time we winked at our ignorance. Mm -hmm. We just we didn't know. We didn't know. You know. But we were foolish right. in the sight of the Lord. We didn't know. Right, go ahead. You got it. Isaiah 65 and 1. I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. Woo, man. Behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. You see? No people. No people. That no people, not my people, I'm ya, Hosea 1, Paul was quoting it, Peter was quoting it. It's all the same, same message, right? No people, no color. Man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dirty as hell, running around, mangy, scabs on our head. You know, eating crumbs. They're called, you know? they're called strays. Yeah. Castaways. They got no home. Castaways. Isaiah 11. Outcast. <laughs> right? Cast out. Um, what's that doing? Uh, Verse 19. Oh, actually, it reads down the next verse is the precept I brought up. Oh, hey, that's true. <laughs> verse 20. But Isaiah is very bold and said, wow. I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest of them that asked not for me. Wow, so he just well, he just quoted Isaiah again. That was it. That was it. It was a breakdown. You know? So we can jump back to uh Hosea 1. I know we said number two, chapter 2, but yeah, you know. Uh, you can finish off. Uh, verse 11, back in the book of Hosea, chapter 1, verse 11, it says, Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together. Then, so, so we know that this no people is talking about Judah and Israel, the northern and the southern kingdom. We know that that's what it's talking about. Hosea is letting us know. Paul knew. Peter knew. Then shall Judah and Israel be gathered together. 
Mm-hmm. Right? Go ahead. It's supposed to lock, which means if you were gather some, they were scattered. So what other people on the planet were scattered? They would have to be gathered again. Right, the elect. You throw a handful, of, like I remember you bring this out. You throw a handful of marbles out in the street. You got, your favorite one is the blue ones, right? And you got a whole blue, yellow, red, purple, black, and you just throw them holes, and you like, you know what? I'm about to just pick up every single blue one. That's the elect. But the whole handful of the marbles is, is one clump of, of one th- of one. Right. You see, mm-hmm. and you just but you're gathering your your favorite ones though. You know. Now, eventually, all your other ones are going, you know, I'm going to give all my other ones later, but specifically, I want these blue ones, right? I mean, you're going to clean them up, you're going to wash them while they were dirty, you know, and then you're going to put and you're gonna put them on the show. Those are your favorite marbles, you know? Go ahead. Yeah, I got a precept, if I may. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this is the book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 1. It says, gather yourselves together, yeah, gather together, O nation, not desire. Woo! Not desire. Yeah. Those no people, man. The no people. Yeah. We ain't, we, you know, the yeah. undesirables. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting. It says Judah and Ephraim, which is a fulfillment of the tabernacle of David. And the mercies of David are associated with uh, not being judged according to your true, what you really did. You're right. Mercy, basically. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. mercy. The mercies of David. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's why when you read verse two, it says, "Say unto your brothers, I me, and to your sisters, Ruhama." It doesn't say Ma. Yeah. It says my people. It says my people in mercy, not no mercy, and not my people. The next verse literally calls us his people now, right? But uh, you can read verse eleven again. Come, come. Back in the book of Hosea, chapter one, verse eleven. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together, and appoint themselves one head. Ooh. And they shall come up out of the land. They're going to appoint themselves one head, and they're going to come up out of the land. Well, we were said that we not those people, and that you know we don't got to get it. But you know Isaiah the eleventh chapter. Mm-hmm. You know we're going to look to we're going to look to uh, Yahweh Shai as the banner. You know, and he's going to gather together the outcasts of Israel, Israel that was scattered in all these different lands. You know, Jeremiah the third chapter, Ezekiel thirty seven, the, the Valley of Dry Bones. You know, we're going to wake up. Right, we're going to be gathered together in the last day. The house of David being risen up in the, the tabernacle of David, of Amos nine. You see, all these things is us gathering ourselves together in the last days, as a prophecy said would happen. Right, go ahead. It says, "For great shall be the day of Jezreel." For great shall be the day of Jezreel. And what is it? What does Jezreel mean again? So, 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 most high soul. <clears throat> See, so great shall be the day of Jezreel. And what ultimately, what if the Lord, what if, it's probably the air from uh, people close their doors, but you know, what if the Most High sowed? The seeds. You see, in, in a spiritual sense, he sowed the word in us to be able to wake up. That's what makes us, the Most High sown the word into us so that what? We could become those children. Now we're no longer called a not nor no people or to have no mercy. Now, like in verse two, say unto your brethren, I me, and to your sisters, Ruhama. Because if, if chapter one, there was La Anya and La La Ramah. See? So, you know, if any, uh, any other brother got any closing precepts or anything? Forever hold your peace. Now, uh, so, hey, with that. You know, Lord willing, this uh, lesson was edifying. Until the next time, we want to give all praise, honor, and glory to. Shalom. the apostles and others. Great most, talks truth, and much peace, love, and salutations to the elect. Shalom. Shalom.